Introduce yourselves. I'm Bill. I'm the guy that uh, I'm concerned about the uh, what the township is doing. I'm Jim, his wife. I'm Barb Delaney. I'm one of your Lockport Township trustees. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I'm Linda Creed. I'm Don. Creed. 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 Okay, okay, that's that's a couple. Okay. Yeah. I'm Bert Thompson. I place off Smith Road and barely in Lockport Township. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> oh, Ed Piani. Piani. Yeah. Otherwise known yeah. as <laughs> Santa. Santa. <laughs> the singing Santa. Singing Santa. So yeah. you have a band too. I'm oh. very a month. I'm oh. very new. Mm. On television. You got I just did the uh, introduction so you can tell us who you well, are. Mystery guest sign in, <laughs> please. Okay, my name is Rob Brendel. I uh, have been in Lockport for a few months. We're renting from him. We're looking for property in, in, in the area. Okay, and Grant, you want to say who you are or anything? I'm Grant. Uh huh. Okay, hey, Grant. That's Grant. Okay, is there any, you know, I've been sending out uh, emails and that kind of stuff. Is there anything that, uh, any topics that, that you're primarily interested in that you'd like to address? How would you identify a million? A million? Yeah, a million. Saving a million dollars. Okay, I'll go into that. Anybody else? So you read my, uh, where, where was it at? The email. Uh, Facebook. 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 Yeah, yes. it was on nextdoor.com. I got that. Oh, right yeah. Too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it and I'm like, how? Oh, okay. Oh. <coughs> So I'm going, to, I'm going to address that along with other things. Um, I'm not an accountant, a politician, an attorney, or a public speaker. So I wanted to make sure that I put all that up front because I might use the wrong words. And if I do, I apologize. It's not meant to offend anybody. If, you're, uh, if you have any accounting background or legal background, you'll probably see a lot of things that I do that aren't exactly precise. I'm a, I'm a 70 year old guy. I've uh, been in business for myself all my life. I'm a uh, retired uh, and I'm a resident of Lockport. I have children and grandchildren that also uh, live in Lockport. And we love the town. I mean, it's so much different than where we came from. We came from uh, Chicago and, uh, and uh, Oakland, and it's a lot different. We really do meet the people in the grocery store that you see at meetings, and so um, I like it. Um, there, uh, one of the things my wife asked me to do is to is to tell you up front what the action is that I'd, I'd like you guys to take if possible. And that is, uh, one of the things that she told me too is that I'm not a good presenter. So for those of you that are good presenters, maybe you'd like to participate in that and shore up the organization uh, or our petitions, if you will, where it's needed. Um, I think also it's necessary that we show up at the, at the township meetings. The township meetings are second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 in the, in the, uh, in the hall, which is on uh, Farrell Road. Road. Um, so uh, I was really shocked at um, how much is being taken from us. And again, we'll go over that in detail. Uh, but under, under, I say stolen from us uh, under false pretenses. So, um, uh, what brought my attention to this is recently I took a, a trip to a Tennessee and Florida and I found out how absolutely ridiculous the taxes are here in Illinois. So those of you who don't get out much, uh, the taxes are, are absolutely crazy. Gasoline was 70 cents a gallon uh, higher here. Uh, there's an income tax here. Uh, there's a sales tax and, and in Florida there were many purchases I made that were no uh, sales tax. We also, Jenny just got uh, re, uh, to get our cars uh, re-registered with, uh, with the state, that went up. Uh, our business taxes are 50% higher than what they are in adjacent states. And our property taxes by what I bought are about seven times as high as they would be in state in uh, uh, either Florida or Tennessee. And the problem with the property tax is that we pay the property tax twice. We pay the property tax once when we write the check out uh, to the county, or whoever we write it out to, or, uh, and we also pay for it on our houses when we sell it. So the amount of money that somebody can pay for your house is the amount of money that the mortgage payment is going to be plus the, um, plus the taxes. 
So if your taxes are 12,000 a year, and I just put that because <laughs> it's easier to divide. So if your taxes are 12,000 a year, that's 1,000 a month. And 1,000 a month, if somebody could afford a $3,000 mortgage, now with that property tax on there, they can only file a $2,000 mortgage, which is a drop in, drop in, in the value of your house of, uh, of 33%. Now in Tennessee, we were just down in, in Texas, we talked to Janie's brother, and his taxes in, in Florida were $500 a year, a year. Now of course, you know, I've heard other things, you know, and, and uh, I've heard a lot, <laughs> I got slammed a lot in the webpage, I don't know how to spell. And if people ask me, did you proofread it? Yes, I spelled it wrong the second time, too. Okay, I gotta got vouch for it. He does know how to spell, he just doesn't care. He is a college graduate, but his fingers just go, you know, and he's got the Mark Twain attitude about spelling, you know. My computer spells for me, so I'm going to hit Oh, he's too far away for even the computer to fix it, you know. <laughs> we can figure it out. Yeah, okay, did you see? Oh, anyway, so anyway, I got slammed a lot as far as my inability to spell, and, you know, I really didn't think it was that important. But anyway, so to some people it is, but they're not here. So. It makes noise. Huh? They're probably ex nuns. <laughs> that was here, here, here. <laughs> All right, this is my feeling about government, too, is I believe the government should represent us. The guys that we elect should represent what our needs are, not what their needs are, what their family needs are. Uh, Jefferson stated the only pur purpose of power is to prevent harm to come to the helpless, and that's us. Now, we're helpless if our officials you know, increase our taxes and then. Uh, and then we can't pay it and they take our houses or cars or whatever else away. Another thing that I saw a quote from Coolidge and he said, we must limit government. It's uh, responsible to nobody and they govern and set their own policies and, over, and they overwhelm government. They, over, they overwhelm dem democracy. Government must be limited. So I'm gonna go into detail. Some of the details again, you know, you guys that are, that are accountants, you may find that there's uh, some of the numbers might be off. Problems that I have is that I'm not really into the uh, into the accounting system at the uh, at the township, and all I have is the is the information that they provide us on the internet. It's available to everybody. It's open. You can get it yourselves. So um, by mistake, <laughs> to make a mistake, keep it yourself. No. <laughs> okay. So um, what bothers me is that if we continually have representatives or people that we elect to be our representative and they can't represent us, what they're supposed to do is, is use the funds that they take from us to, for our betterment not, betterment, not for theirs, and not for the, the employment of their relatives and, and friends and neighbors. I mean, it's just like, uh, I mean, it's not that I dislike somebody. But I mean, if you have a mechanic who repeatedly can't fix your car, you can still like the guy. Just get a different person to do your mechanical work. Uh, they've overcharged us, and I'll go into that. It's into the packets. I wanted to say too that when I was going through the notes, I noticed that uh, that Barb ha has frequently brought up objections to this bloated uh, budget, and uh, but it's got to be frustrating for her because. Um, uh, it's just ignored because she is in the minority. So what we need to do also in this is to get more people who are involved and then you ourselves get involved at the, at the meetings. At the meetings, uh, we're limited to three minutes a person. And what I've done in the past is I've had people that come into the meeting sign their time over to me. Because what will happen is the uh, person in charge will filibuster until your two minutes are up. You know, so, but if I've got an hour and a half, now he doesn't do that anymore because he knows I'll wait the hour and a half. Um, there, are many, uh, there are many projects that, that benefit, that are being carried out in the township that benefit very few people. We were at a fire meeting the other day and the fire department told us there's 85,000 residents in this area. The last census put it at 60, so I don't know. Uh, but for instance, bingo. Bingo is there, the bingo is there three times a week, and the bingo, maybe you get 20 people there three times a week. We've got the food pantry, uh, and also, uh, you know, which was someplace else. We have Meals on Wheels. Uh, Janie and I have been doing Meals on Wheels for several years now. We were working out of, the, out of a basement of a church before. That basement is still available. That church is still there. 
but the services that, that to make uh, I guess the, the building used is they offered uh, offered it there. Now the program services I believe 30 people out of uh, Meals on Wheels out of that. The old office and these numbers might be a little bit off, but it's kind of right. The old office that we had downtown was like 5,000 square feet. The new one is 27,000 pairs. Uh, square feet. In addition to that, we've got expenses for this building that uh, uh, that's uh, the blacktop we have to maintain. We have to we have to plow the snow, and we've got we've got to heat the building. We've got all that expenses that weren't at the old building. Uh, the the building was bought, and expenditures was around uh, two to three million dollars. The the, the 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 people that were at the meeting voted down April fifteenth to go ahead with the building and the uh, township was supposed to the township was supposed to uh, uh, not go ahead unless there was a referendum and that was April 15th on 12-28 I want you to think about that date 12-28 that comes right after Christmas and right before New Year's they had an emergency meeting that they didn't notify anyone and the reason that they didn't when they were asked why they didn't notify anyone is they said that the girl who posted on the internet was sick so with the with that they went ahead and they 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 voted the building in despite the fact that there were over 300 people at the meeting at town center and said they didn't want it also at that meeting several people brought up alternatives that were significantly cheaper uh, for instance the, where the boy scout building was it used to be a uh, building for the the township uh, for the city, and, uh, and they could have gotten it from the city, so the money could have gone, you know, from 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 the township to the city. It would have stayed within our taxing bodies. Instead, it left and it went to other uh, other places like the church and uh, to have it renovated. Uh, the other thing I wanted, you know, and again, I don't know how much time we're going to have here. But if you take a look through the packet, and I will as, in as much detail as I can, is that some of these things are mislabeled. Now, I said that is, that, is that a misallocation of funds or something? I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get into legal language. But they definitely have been doing this for a few decades and continually to, to misrepresent what they're spending the money on. Every year there's an overcharge. And, um, and I'll tell you, and, and the reason that we know, the way that we know that there's an overcharge is the surplus that's in the bank accounts. Now, there's several different accounts that we have. We've got the road fund, the general assistant fund, the town fund, the senior fund, the water fund, and, uh, okay, that's it. In the road fund, uh, we had $835,000 when the budget was, I didn't, I don't think I gave you these numbers. All right, maybe they are in there. $835,000 plus we had outstanding revenue that was going to come from the state or county of four hundred eleven. dollars uh, We had a general assistance fund of with, an, with a, a balance in the bank of $691,000. We had a town fund that had $3,168,000 plus additional $3,168,000 plus an additional revenue of $172,000 that was coming in. We have a senior fund with a balance of $1,680,000. $1,680,000, and they had additional revenue coming in of $22,000. We had a water department, and I'm not sure where this fits, but the water department, we closed and we gave it to uh, Joliet, but there was uh, $348,000 in there. Now, adding up all of those balances, that comes to $7,330,897. That's money that was taxed from us to taxpayer, and it's a surplus amount of money that's not going to be used. And they continue to do that every year. Now, it was brought to Ron's attention, why are you raising it that amount if we, have, if we have millions of dollars in the bank? As we go through this, we have maybe five or six years that we don't have to get taxed for these various funds. Now, I've got 5%, but I really don't know what the amount was. But why did you raise it that percentage? And Ron's answer was, because that's all the higher I can raise it. That's as much as I can raise it. So, as this money is being depleted, you know, from your, from your revenue, it's also decreasing your property values, and the reason is, that's all he can raise it. In addition to the, uh, the building, uh, you know, there's all kinds of maintenance that we have to do, and equipment. Uh, also, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure about this, but um, 
there's a, a, something up for a pole barn for $353,000. Now, uh, again, uh, when is that coming up, Barney? That actually has not been discussed any further. So, because uh, we've been doing the proposed budget. So we will see if he plans on bringing this back to our attention after the budget. <coughs> Which is March, uh, we are supposed to be April? now. We're supposed to be voting on our proposed budget in April. April 14th. Right? Um, yeah, April 14th. And actually, back to the bid that we did get, I see he does have it in here. The thing that concerns me with this is we have asked repeatedly to the supervisor to use local contractors and go out and get multiple bids. He has not, very rarely does he ever do that. This quote that we got, and I don't think it states it on here, this is actually from a company <coughs> out of the state of Michigan. Top right, I think. Okay. Um, Page nine, she's talking about it. But again, he does this repeatedly. It's nice if you're going to keep, if you're going to build something in the township, you use a contractor from the township and get multiple bids, so we always have something to compare it to. <coughs> Um, on a side note, my husband and I were construction uh, business owners for over 35 years, and some of these prices on here are way off chart. So, I'm sorry, it does not say a copy to one sheet. No, cheap. it doesn't. But so, it, is, it is an out-of-state contractor. Where's this pole barn supposed to be for? Actually, what it is is he anticipates doing an addition onto, we have an existing pole barn on our property now on Farrell Road where they put like, um, they store extra dry goods for the food pantry or our trucks, that are, uh, um, the buses the too buses. as well go in there. He wants to build onto that and expand that. Again, expanding government and expanding buildings and giving more overhead and it's just, it's, it's uh, Vicious cycle. Yeah, that's the that's a problem, and, and hopefully, I mean, w with those balances that you see in each one of the departments, that's what the township does, and then it goes and just moves the money from one account into another, and then spends three million dollars on a building that we don't need. Now we've got a, a barn there, housing equipment, tractors, and all that kind of stuff that we don't need, and we, we're going to have to get bigger tractors that we don't need uh, to put in the the pole barn. So. Uh, so, I mean, my question isn't just like Barbara just brought up. I mean, who's really benefiting from all this additional spending? I mean, where is this additional money going? It's not the taxpayer. Because there's 30 people that get uh, the Meals on Wheels and 20 people that do the bingo. And if you take a look at what they used the uh, building for last month in February, there were two events that were, that were there and they used it for practice where they could have used any one of our schools uh, whose, whose uh, gyms were available. But anyway, uh, so again, what's going on? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, it's simple to know where, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's simple to know where you're getting numbers because they are close to people in there. Um, why, let me back it up, when Ron was invited to join us to talk about it, what was his reason for not attending? Was he invited? Uh, everyone was invited. It was an open meeting, so it wasn't it wasn't a secret. But he wasn't specifically invited because we were going to talk about it. If I could just add something with Ron, um, for Ron to try to explain something was very difficult. When we sit in our meetings, which this meeting for our proposed budget was an open meeting to the public. 90% of the explanation of this proposed budget comes from our accountant. Which is one of the No, no, we have an accounting firm, which okay. is hired by Ron. So again, we <coughs> kind of work side by side. Are they local? Well, uh, they are. Oh. They're out, well, they're out of Joliet. Whoa. So um, mm. my train of thought always is to change accounting firms, to change lawyers at least every three or four years so you get a new set of eyes on things. Since I have been a trustee in the township, this is just going to be my fourth year. Um, when we first came on, another trustee and myself, we did not agree with hiring the same attorney. He's been there for a very long time. You need to get a new set of eyes and a new attorney. We were voted <coughs> down. So, so then you're representing the numbers and the history and the, uh, 
on behalf of the um, township so that there's balance. Which we try to get balance, mm -hmm. but he, oh, um, again, when you have a five person board, and just everybody understands, our supervisor is a voting member. We have four trustees and a supervisor. 90% yeah. of the votes are a tiebreaker by the supervisor. It's three against two. That's why it just keeps going the way it is. When you have a two person um, vote <coughs> against three, we're always going to lose. Always. Okay, so you're representing yourself, not the board. No, no. I'm just here basically if there's any questions to explain this a little more. Again, I agree with Bill. What Bill does in the amount of time that him and his wife put into this to try to get out to the community in Lockport Township is where your money is going. Because um, I don't agree with it. I totally agree with Bill. Um, one of the things he did post on Facebook about the million dollars and what he's referring to is this is something we have to vote on in April. Right now, the township has over $3 million in surplus. Mm -hmm. And how we got to that point, and when I asked that point in our workshop, yeah. again, the accountant had to explain it. Right. Basically, what it does is every year we have to go to the county and ask for a tax petition. levy, right? Yeah. Petition for a tax levy. Right. They always say we ask for the highest amount Correct. and get what the county gives us. Right. Okay. So, my argument with that all the time is why do we keep asking for money when we have a surplus and the response is usually from the accountant and the supervisor if it's we don't ask procedure. for it, normal procedure yeah okay so you the <laughs> million dollars that is a surplus that they are asking us to vote on in april mm -hmm. um is four hundred thousand dollars from a senior fund, and then there's a $600,000 rebate they want to give out of another oh. fund. Basically, it's money going back to you, mm -hmm. which at this point in time, preparing for the 2020 election right. that the supervisor is <coughs> going to be running again for, he's giving a rebate to everybody. So he's going to look good in everybody's eyes. That's what he's doing. Because a little noise has been started to be made. But Mary, in answer to your question about why it doesn't want to come to a meeting, yeah. you know, honestly, because he doesn't have to. And would you? Because at the bottom line, look at this room, nobody cares. We went to um, a few I days would, ago. I would personally. Yeah, you're here. We went a few <laughs> days ago to the um, uh, fire department uh, presentation about the referendum. Mm -hmm. They reserved Prairie Bluff. Um, they had hundreds of seats set up, at least a dozen uh, fire department personnel to answer questions, equipment to show, mm -hmm. figures to show. Were there 20 people there? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. They don't care. So if you were a politician and a human being who says, hey, if I can get this, why not? It's human nature. And you know there's no repercussions. Nobody cares. I and just, just um, within my um, natural curiosity, First time in here, yeah. first time meeting all of you, I have to ask. Sure. Did we personally invite them? Did they respond? Because there's a lot of information and not a lot of um, accountability or answers. Right. So, so to speak on things and presume and find fault, the natural question is, and Bill has been to the township meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to the township meetings, and a lot of times I'm the only guy there. And so the problem with that is that I only get two minutes or three minutes, and so right. you can't really get into depth. So, uh, also Barb uh, <coughs> is uh, is on the board, and so she asks the question as well, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's given her time. Right. But it's like she's speaking a foreign language. It's kind of funny because she's given her time to speak, and then. <laughs> right. right. It doesn't, I agree, it doesn't make it right. Um, doesn't make it unusual either because mm. that standard procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, even standards. at this workshop meeting that we had, um, it's open to the public, it's advertised, nobody came. Okay. So nobody really cares to hear about the budget where your money is going. Right. But people want to complain about it. 
Well, or they don't income. see, or they don't see it as a, as a very large part of their taxes. Right. School requires more, you know, is, is a bigger portion. So say, I'm happy with my services. It's no big deal. I don't pay that much. Where do you start? You know, you're not going to start by being a United States senator. You know, you have to start in your community, getting your community to say, yeah, we'll look into these figures. We care that they said the new township building was going to be a, a great thing to buy because it would be so much less expensive than the new project they had originally intended. Mm -hmm. Well, once they had it, they started to spend money on improving it and expanding it and remodeling it, and the, and the end result was way bigger than anyone had been told. But nobody inquired. So Bill's trying to start somewhere. It's a small spot to start, but where should you start? Thank you. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Bill? Yeah. <coughs> statement more than a question. The budget is the basis for your tax levy. Mm -hmm. So it's ever in there, it's going to be assessed, plus 5%. Right. Uh, so that's the basis of it. The million dollars Alba Rico is asking for in two different line items. He's essentially taxing the people to give it back to him. Okay. Yeah, so if you go to, uh, let me see. So on page one, what I was just showing is what the balance is. And the balance based on how much money was taken out during that month, there's a 62-month uh, surplus. And that was in October. In September, it's the same fund. It's the general fund. And they had an 89 or 87-month balance in there based on the amount of money they were spending and the balance that was in there. You go to page uh, three, this is the budget uh, proposal for the GA, the general fund, and uh, you see that there's a 3%. I have a problem with the 3% raise for people who are inadequately doing the job, who are not only limiting, or are not only not limiting government, but increasing government, and the reward for that is to increase their pay. I think that's crazy. What's her cost of living? Well, I don't, I don't know, but uh, somewhere around two. Two, okay, two. Okay. Uh, I don't know what IMRF is. What is that? That's retirement. Retirement. Illinois Municipal Retirement. Oh, Illinois Municipal. Okay, so that went up uh, close to six percent. Also, if you take a look at the columns, uh, uh, the middle column is the amount that they actually spent. This is another cont contention that I have is they spent $800 uh, on equipment, equipment maintenance, yet they, they asked for uh, $3,000. They had other, I love this too, there's so much of this nebulous thing, other professional services. Now what is that, other professional services? Could be engineers, could be lawyers. Yeah, 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 except we got that all legal, we got that all listed out someplace. Yeah, it could be towing. I mean, there's a lot of towing. <laughs> towing is the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys make so much money, man. I yeah. can't. Think. Anyway, okay. So we have other fun, and and we then, we, although they use none of it, they charge us the sixty-two hundred dollars, and that goes all the way down the line. <clears throat> I also have a hard time with the, uh, you know, equipment purchases. I mean, so I mean, it, you're right. If if we just said general services. So even at professional services, sixty-two hundred dollars, and they didn't, they didn't spend it. So it goes into general. It just goes into surplus. Correct. And right. Sixty-two hundred. That yeah. goes into the balance, right. right? And so, and so, what we learn from this as we go through this is that even though they don't, they, they budgeted it, and that's okay. They didn't use it. What did they do? They budgeted again the next year. Right. But that sixty-two hundred dollars is comes off of your your building. You know, your house, your real estate. Right. If you go all the way down, this, this is another thing that, that really bugs me, and this is the general fund. Is this it? Uh, the relief, the general assistance. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, what is the, uh, yeah, uh, let me see what that is. Oh, here it is. For the general fund, the total amount that they have allocated uh, to make this happen is $108,000. For the people that were in need, is that what this is here, Barb? The, is this the general fund? You're on page three? Yeah. Which line item are you In the middle, page? the whole the whole thing under relief? Zero, zero, five. All the way down, they used, uh, used $21,716. Of the total that they budgeted was $220,000. So I'm, I believe what this amount is, relief is, this, bu this budget, 
is to help people in need. Correct. People who can't pay for their electric Correct. and they have to the bad. And the amount that they use is in the middle yeah, of the yeah. So the, the amount that they've allocated for this fund is $220,000. The amount of money that they found people in need of is $21,000. Well, it's, it's, it's no, 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 it's 111. It's 111. The total expense is on the bottom of the combination of the top. Still, 111 million. Right, right. Right, right. So the total, but for the total for the budget, what I'm saying is the total that they charged us was $220,000, total that they charged us. The amount that they gave people in need was 21000 I think that's based on the average income perceived. And my part is like 80 something thousand. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever they based it on, this is repeated every year, where only 5% of, of the money is given out. And like Bert said, the surplus, the new target for um, for candidates to come in, and correct me if I'm wrong, again, I've only been here a year. So we're targeting students, we're targeting to buy the building or somehow bring it in. That's the Illinois State Museum and make the top of it um, Lewis University satellite. So if we're going to make it satellite, the cost for students to house somewhere in it is going to overall reduce the income level from the 80-something thousand down to the student level. And that would reduce our total income and require a planning at least for students now. I agree with what you're saying. If it's if it's budgeted but not used, then that's an issue, Brandon. But if we're planning to increase the student population, we have to keep it in the budget. But it needs to come back out. And it has to be correct. Yeah, it's got to be correctly identified so that the taxpayers know what they're paying for, and not to continually misallocate or mislabel these things here. Now, if you want a you know, benevolent fund for starving children, then put it down there. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then the people can vote on it. But how can, how can we vote or how can the trustees vote if, is they, it, don't know. if, they, don't, if they keep continually mis, misallocate the, 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 the funds? Right. It was about 7% for miscellaneous. Were you at? What line? The last line item of relief. $8,000. $8,000. Yeah. And the last column. The last column. Yeah. That's pretty. That wouldn't stand up in my budget or what? I know. <laughs> I mean, and that's what I'm saying. As we go through these things, there are so many miscellaneous and unidentified. So that's just, you know, this that's just what I'm pointing out. I know when I ran my businesses, I knew exactly what amount I was going to spend on each item. Right. And if I didn't need it, then the next year I wouldn't put that in there. And then especially what you're doing, Bert, I mean, you take a look at how much each truck costs, then you say this is how much I got allocated, right. and if the truck goes over that amount, you probably dump it, you know, or whatever. Well, one of our arguments, the other trustee and myself always question, and just the general fund, is when you look at the amount that it costs the administration to give the amount of what we yeah. are giving. It's a full-time person who basically, with the benefits, and everything and the salary that that person gets, mm -hmm. they're close to $75,000. Okay? Yeah. $75,000 to give how much? $21,000. What do other townships spend on public assistance? I'm sorry, what? What do other townships spend on public assistance? Um, I'm not sure what other townships spend on it, but what, what I. Food? What? Wooten. Oh, do you, well, but you, you have to compare, and that's what I said to be, what I was told to be careful with, Shanahan. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's referring to, I know, a supervisor out in Shanahan. But you have to look at the size of the area, okay? Right. Shanahan <coughs> is a quarter of the size of Lockport Township. Okay. That's why I really didn't, you're not comparing. It's got to be the same size. No, it's not. Well, six, Shanahan it's is six square miles. That's All right, let's move You're looking out. at the rooftops. <laughs> All right, girls. We just, we just did the woman's club budget, and the thing that's silly about this general assistance, and we have to notice in the second line of this whole page, this is general assistance. This mm -hmm. is what it costs 
to provide something that sounds really good, general assistance to needy people, giving relief in the community. But it's a huge, unwieldy program that costs the budgets. $220,000 and what actually gets to people who need relief is $21,000. If I was looking at a budget like this year after year after year, I'd say, let's divert some of this money to some other good program. This is really administration heavy. And nothing's getting to the people who need, well, something, but $21,000? That's a lot of administration getting paid to give out $21,000? And the process that the residents have to go through to get this relief is they have to fill out an application and they have to prove to us. So on the average, we get a monthly report at our meetings as to how many residents fill out the application. On the average, it's maybe seven. So an entire month, seven people will fill out an application mm -hmm. and how many actually get to the point where we approve it? Mm -hmm. Two. And if this is the year's budget, $21,000 was given out in a year. That's less than $2,000 a month. I'll administer that $2,000 a month. You can probably so what I try to time. make the, the point I try to make across is do we really need a full-time person for 70 something exactly? Seven so applications a month, so a, a person can't do that, and another person can't take over that responsibility. There's only one admin administering this whole thing. Yeah, Chris, Chris. Well, what, I was getting, what, I was getting, <laughs> what I was getting to when I asked Barb that is other townships, let's use Homer for instance, all that is done by the supervisor. They don't have any employees underneath them. And when you look in the township handbook, which all trustees get, and I've been reading up on this more, it is a supervisor's responsibility. Actually, he's supposed to be making home visits to these applicants to see if they need it. It is the supervisor. But what our supervisor chooses to do is just give the job to somebody else and got the money. Well, I was going to say, how's the allocator? Um, I mean, you think so? I mean, they. You said seven applicants, and yes. at the end of the month, there's two that... Brought that, back all that. the information, right. And then the supervisor is the one who basically makes that decision as to how much. Because they have to basically come in, for example, we're going to pick one that somebody did get. Obviously, funeral and burial are not used. Okay, shelter, which is basically somebody's rent. Okay. So when the application comes in, the questions that are asked is, okay, so why do you need help us with paying your mortgage this month? They have to prove to us, to Chris in the office, yeah. that they were unemployed for three months. I'm on um, unemployment right now. This is all the proof we asked for. But and she fact checks that. Exactly, she does. Bird, how much money does the completely volunteer Lockport Love give away in a year? Little group of people, volunteers and donors. More, what do they give more, away in a year? Than, more than 20 grand. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And what does it cost to give that away? And how much do you get paid for doing that? Person? Zero. <laughs> Volunteers and donors. And it's yeah. fact checked. <laughs> and it is fact checked. We all go visit people and be sure they really need it, right? Right. All right. So on, on page four, it's just a consolidation to di you know a different form of the same information, but basically on this particular month when this <coughs> sheet was printed out. It was $220,000 for the complete program, and up to the year end, up to that time, they had only given away $12,000. So that comes out to, what is it, less than 6% of what the money is. So, there, you know, we've already covered that as far as the general fund and, and what's happening to that, to that money. Um, again, the recaps, uh, the next one down is uh, number five, and uh, this is the town fund recap, and this is how much money we have in the town fund. Again, I don't have the accounting, so I don't know exactly everything the way it flows, but there's a $3,168,996.76 uh, <laughs> surplus in the town fund. Now, surplus sounds good, except that what that means is this excess amount that we're taxed. We're shown by these sheets what they're going to use the money for, and they don't use it for that. So, you know, so what happens is, what that does, and if you, anybody was here when they bought that building, Ron said at the building, we're not going to tax you anything more. We already have the money. Yeah, because they've been taxing us all along. Same thing with the shed. They're not going to tax us anything more. They're going to draw that $20,000 shed, or did I say $360,000? And they're going to draw that, you know, from the surplus that they have. Um, so, I mean, that's what's 
kind of disgusting about this whole situation. Again, we go on to page 6A and Can 6... I, you know what's glaring about this? And this goes back to your county firm. They have $2 million in a savings account. Yes. And only half a million dollars in a CD. I didn't bring that. Yeah, I, I didn't bring that, but it's ridiculous. I brought it up in the past, and I didn't bring it today. But how much money they're receiving from the money that's sitting in the bank. What's really happening with the money? What's really you know, happening? I, you know, if that was being... I mean, that's a big, that's a big chunk of change. Of it's yeah. just not, not, being, not, not being... Not being... Not getting anything, no. right? Well, yeah. Is it not getting any interest at all? It's been significant. It's about a half a percent or a quarter percent or something like that. Okay. It's I didn't unfortunately I didn't I didn't think we have enough time to go into all of it. And what I wanted to display, if you will, is the incompetency that we have, and it continues. And as much as we bring it up, it doesn't make any difference. Those the people that are in power continue to do this. So in 6A, uh, you know, I go into the same no, thing. There, it's, it's listed there. What's yeah, that? 112, 112 bucks and... Interest. Yeah. Oh, the interest on the savings. 112 dollars and two million. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good number, isn't that's it? A great number. Jeez, yeah. All right, so on 6A, I've also highlighted some, some places here where the money was not used. Yet it's still uh, it, it's still being uh, asked for in the following in the following year. I mean, some of these things to me are absolutely crazy. Uh, I mean, lock boxes. What are lock boxes? Lock boxes are actually a good thing, but the lock boxes are. All right, that's enough from you. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing. Basically, um, other areas, Crest Hill does it, Joliet, I think does it. I'm not sure. And Romeoville, it's for seniors. Okay, if seniors live alone and they need a lockbox put on their house, if they fall down or something, that key is used by the firemen and paramedics to get in that house and help them. So <coughs> that's a good program. Instead of breaking the house. Exactly, breaking down the door. It's easier just to get that little key out of the lockbox. So that's what lockboxes are. Sorry, Bill. Nice going. <laughs> anyway, there, uh, you can take a look at where I've highlighted these. You can look at, take a look at yourself. And again, my main thrust is that this ridiculously high budget, if you take a look, out of the $643,000 out of all these totals, we have, uh, what is that, $320,000 that's unused. So what, is, what does that represent, the $320,000? The $320,000 is, you know, here's the thing too, is that I, I know a Rolls Royce is worth it. I mean, it's definitely worth it because people buy them, but I can't afford it. Well, what's, what's our aging population? Because the majority of this is in the senior programs. I'm sorry, the major is what? The majority of what you've identified, which is, by the way, this is awesome, thank you. Um, the majority of what you've identified falls under senior programs. Okay. So it's senior planning and cost allocation. Does anybody know what our aging population is? Well, I mean, they we work with Nails on Wheels, and we we have a particular interest in seniors. Um, Ron, in my experience, and I don't know you can verify this, um, tries to appear as though he's quite interested in seniors and tries to get senior programs going on. I'm kind of curious myself about duplication of effort because the Park District does a lot of programs for seniors. AARP does a lot of programs for seniors. Meals on Wheels in the county does a lot of programs for seniors. And he even tried to recruit me to start some sort of a senior group in the within the township so he could say, here, look at my senior group. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, what are you achieving with this? It's like the bingo. It, it looks good, I guess. You know? Well, it's, what's the federal funding is where I was going to go? Because if it can come off of hours, the tension, not hit the Will County because of the proposed reduction in, in funding for the state, can it grow federal? And it's a good question, but just to add to what Jane had said, we duplicate a lot of services. Really like when you look at all these right here, the Golden Ages, Young Timer, Silver what page Angel. Are these are six A. I'm sorry. What page? Page um, six A. Okay. Under the senior programs, when you look at the appropriation for each one of those programs, four thousand each. So there's one, two, three, four, five of them. Okay. So all those four thousand dollars, they were going to those programs to the Lockport Township Park District. 
They come into our building, which they have a new building for their community. Yeah. So they're coming to our building and using our building, which expense again. Mm -hmm. We actually give them four thousand dollars. Now, does this make sense to you? We are paying the park district to come into our building, even though they have a building. Oh, gosh. <laughs> right. So yes. as I'm saying, they come into our building, and we're paying. Them. Okay. The community this doesn't make any sense. Totally. I get completely what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, and you know the question is, what do they qualify for? Certain programs require certain stipulation or qualifications. Right, you're right. So, who are they? What is the qualification? Is anybody checking the qualifications? Yeah. The park district was building their community center supposedly to give more space to, to, to have community events and serve the seniors at the same time that Ron was doing this. And when I asked the head of the park district, I'm a little more aware of that, you know, at the women's club, um, said, you know, do, why are you building this, you know, because they're doing that over there. And he said, well, the plans are already in the works when we heard they were doing that, so we're just going ahead with it. Which makes me think again, who's watchdogging these things going on? Why didn't we just nix this project if we didn't need it? Because they're looking for usage for their buildings now. These are things that need to be evaluated or reviewed. Mm -hmm. Every taxing body needs to be watchdogged. Can I add here, I'm not even sure I told Bill this, there's a county in another state that I read about who is the cost of running the county have significantly decreased because little local action groups have gone to the meetings and said, you know, you got a bid for that thing that seems high to us, and we found a guy who will do it for this much, and they actually get engaged, but that starts with us. Yeah, it starts absolutely. with us, and now that the taxing bodies know that they're being watched by the community, the costs have gone down enormously. Like, okay. it's us. Mm -hmm. If you can change anything something. in government, you're going to be able to change it at your local level. That's probably where you're going to start to be able to change something. To change something down in Springfield, stuff like <coughs> that's the most difficult thing to ever do. Almost so, all uh, these local meetings are on YouTube. And Grant actually is the cameraman. He films every one of our meetings. I missed one. Try to keep that up, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so with these information sessions, which are invaluable again, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, What's the next step? Does somebody step up and say, I'll go in and I'll ask for criteria? Does somebody do that? Yeah, the, the next step, to honestly, is to start showing up at the township meetings. Call the newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, happily in our small town, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's a blessing and a curse, but the newspaper personnel changes over regularly because it's a small paper and people move up. Yeah. So somebody leaves as the editor and the assistant editor comes up and is the editor and they're looking around for new stories, always looking around for new stories. I have never asked for a story to be in the paper that wasn't actually written. So call the paper if you hear something going on and ask for somebody to cover it. Okay. You know, but if we aren't formally devising an action group to take the next step. I guess this would be the group that would do that. And that's what, yeah, that, that was where I started it. And, and that is, you know, how to, you know, how to do that. I mean, one of the things that we could do is uh, <coughs> the advertising I did on Facebook did little or no good. Uh, we also had next town or next door. I think that that did some good. Yeah. But to, to you know, how do we attract more people to these meetings and make them aware of this this information? Was everybody aware of the fire department's uh, referendum meeting? Oh yeah. Everybody was aware. Nobody came. Nobody came. I well, had somebody at my house yesterday. When was it? Was a fire was person that walked Wednesday? all the way up my driveway to hand me a flyer. Yeah. I mean, did they have like 300 seats set up? And that was us three and maybe five <laughs> other people. And then maybe the, on the that back, there probably about 30 or 40 people, and that was firemen. And we learned something. And we learned something. I went there already mm -hmm. to, you know, loaded for bears, saying, why are we spending this money? And when they started to show, I'm like, wow. Okay, well, we're just about out of time. I don't know if they're going to kick us out if there's another group, but, uh, you know, I would like to move on to the next suggestion, you know, what to do. We have a meeting uh, this, Tuesday. this Tuesday, and uh, if, if you would like me to present any of this stuff, I would, I would do it, but I need your presence there, and I need your, your time.
uh, or ask to present yourself as a new um, a new person because you know? the following meeting in April is when we vote on this budget and I'll be open in this room right now I'm going to be one of the no's so is there a, are you guys going to have an executive meeting, budget meeting between those? We did, this was it. This was our workshop. It was presented to us, and here's another quick note. I know we're pressed for time here. There was one trustee and myself at this meeting. Two of your other trustees that you people voted to these seats were gone. So there were two trustees that are supervisor in the account. Is the other bar still a trustee? Uh, she is, yes. But she's got one more meeting. She's got one more meeting. And that is another thing, too, is one of our trustees had resigned. There's two barbs on the board. I'm one of them. The other barb has turned in her letter of resignation. Um, this is really how's, not the best time. How's, how's that seat going to be filled? The Democrats will pick who they want. Who they want. Who they want. The paper won't come unless somebody gives them a heads up that something's about to happen. And if we say something's about to happen and they send a reporter, they are down to one third of their number of reporters. So they have to be very selective. If they come and there's three people there, they won't come again. So bring a friend, you know, sit the together, theory, right. fill up the right. fill up the audience. Reporters I mean, like to see full rooms. They don't like to see five or six people because then they're not wasting their time anymore. All right. May I make a suggestion? Yes, please. Uh, it's very easy to say that we don't have enough oversight on these things, and that's what I'm hearing. These particular budgets and services and so on, we don't have enough oversight for people that are not. That oversight is expensive. If you have all of these things going on and you want someone to oversee every one, mm -hmm. you're dealing with an expensive thing. And then the people that are running these programs, are they working full time on this or something? That's another question. Uh, so, oversight is nice, but it is expensive, and you need to have a lot of people doing a lot of things to oversight all of this thing, like the, for the seniors. Well, you've got somebody that you have to go to the houses and so on, and all of that costs money. My next suggestion would be, we're not going to be able to throw all of this out. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do, we, what do we plan to present? My suggestion would be, and it's just a suggestion, uh, is we would try to bring the, be bring the budget down one or two percent, an overall figure, everybody reduces their, their needs one or two percent. Not every project can do that. You know, there, nobody's going to say, no, I can't, I can't cut my budget by one percent. I mean, nobody would believe that. But I think that's the only way, you can't go in there like the bull in the china shop. That isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. But if we say, okay, we want to reduce the total budget. We're not going to argue particular programs right now. We want the bottom line to be 1% or 2% less this year. And then next year, we'll see we can do it. We're going to do it again. And that's my thinking is, you know, you have to, have to give them some kind of goal. Um, and I'm going to agree with you because before I was a trustee here at Lockport Township, I served as a board member at Jolie Junior College for six years. Mm -hmm. When our president had passed away years ago, we were given a new president that I ran the presidential search for. Our first meeting with that new president, our board at that college sat down with her and we said we want this budget cut by 1% and she did it. She went to every one of those departments within that institution, and they did it. So it can be done. Right, and I think uh, it would be, it'd be rather uh, ridiculous of somebody to say, no, I can't cut it one percent. No, it can't I mean, be done. I mean, have heard of that? And that if we give them the incentive to reach that goal, then maybe the next time we can get a little bit more. I but, feel bolder than that, but maybe not as bold as Bill. I would like to see somebody who isn't Bill stand up and ask the question. Why are you asking for an increased assessment when you have money left over mm -hmm. in every previous budget? Right. And understand it's been and, asked and by more than just me. I mean, yeah. Barb has asked it and Greg has asked it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, an additional right. person, right. someone else, because just him asking and making the little noise he's made so far mm -hmm. has caused them to say, oh, let's give the taxpayers a rebate. Well, where did that thought come from? Mm -hmm. Knowing that someone was watching? Yeah. And that rebate idea was 
given six months ago, and just so you do know, it was knocked down six months ago, because myself and the other trustee suggested it. Six months ago, they knocked it down, because they said it's going to cost too much administration costs, the mailing, the postage, and everything. Okay. Now, here we go, closer to election time. Let's give it. Okay, so what? how are you going to change that? How, what are I'm we going to do what? Uh, so that it's not voted down? What has to be done? But it's been passed now, right? No. No, no this, this is for April. Okay. We need the budget. You have to come in with actual numbers, and you have to come in saying this is the population. This is what was allocated, but only use population growth. Because these things are based on the fact that we're positioning for next year and years to come. Mm -hmm. It's not just this is the impact this year. So if we come in and say the senior population is this number of the total population, and the expected growth in Lockport is this. Is that something you can do, Mary? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a great plan. I don't understand how to do it. So if, if you can do that, that would be great. I think because what we need to do is I think we need to do that at the next meeting because April 14th is the next meeting after that. What I was looking for in the answer is we need people there, mm -hmm. first of all, so that, they, the, that the people that are elected know that there are people that are willing to take action and that are taking action. Right. And then secondly is to put a demand, uh, a, a suggestion that rather than increasing it five or three percent every year, is let's, do it, let's, let's forget about that and let's, let's reduce it by one percent a year. Because again, I mean, how I, the question was asked is how did I save the million dollars is that's in there and I asked for the rebate. I asked for the rebate and I had suggested uh, that there are other townships that had given rebates and other towns that had given rebates. Now a miracle of miracles, it shows up on the budget. So a million dollars, I don't know what percentage of the budget it is, but just by that suggestion, it's, it's on there because there were people there. We had maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 people there. No, just when he said there were people there, I have to add, if you come to a meeting and you see anyone else, you know, in the office, please sit together. Sit together so a photographer can get a picture of a small group of people rather than a big gap of seats with people dotted here and there. But by putting it in the budget, you're also taxing the people yeah. to give it back to them. Yeah, yeah, I know. If they don't put it in the budget, we're just giving yeah. money if they don't put it in the budget initially, Later on, they can amend the budget and take it out of savings and disperse it. That way you're not being taxed out of the Yeah, but end. didn't they put it in the budget to justify the amount to the county and what they're asking for? Well, partially, yes. yes. But they're, in, they're still taxing you to give it back to you. Give it back, yeah. I understand. Make a silly gesture. Okay, Barb, my question for you. You're voting on this in April. Correct. Is that before the annual town meeting? I'd have to look at the calendar. Because at the annual town meeting, you should bring it up to reduce it. And actually... And it's run by the residents, not El Rico. Since you brought up the actual, um, the annual town meeting, um, our new highway commissioner for the road and bridge fund, what is on here as well is... A transfer. A transfer of $250,000 into the, again, surplus, because our roads in Lockport Township to be repaired. Honestly, he should have asked for more money. That's a little different. I think he should have asked for 500000 and I, have, I told him to do that. But what I'm saying is that that's going to be discussed at the, um, that Jim's got that on the agenda right. for the annual town hall right. meeting. And it should be amended to raise the budget. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. The, the the people, that's, going cost, that's going to cost more than that. That's going to be two bridges that are Oh. So he should have asked for more money. The people, the roads. There's one on Smith Road, it's a cabby. That's going to be condemned. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the roads yeah, there's, are being There's so much that we could talk about today. Mm -hmm. but, you know, so what are we going to do at this meeting coming up Tuesday? Hold on, let's finish the The roads that need to be repaired, a lot of it is in Fairmont. That $500,000 came from the residents of Fairmont through the water board because of their lawsuit. That's a, that's a little bit too much to explain. Yes, but they paid the money in, and, and one way they could get back is through the roads. You have the roads repaired. Because the highway department really has, has a very tight budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so could we talk about what's going to happen this Tuesday? Ow. And then what's going to happen April, April 14th? Okay. 
So Tuesday, March 10th. Yeah, Correct. is the next is the next board meeting. Is the next uh, township meeting. And it's 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. Township. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll be on time. <laughs> yeah, a, new, a new face asking a question would be, would be welcome. You, know? yeah. you had asked me, would I be willing to do that? I'm willing to help. I think it's, um, I think it's weak, an observation for someone who's brand new into this city to go in and share something. I okay, I mean, that's fine. It, on the other hand, that may be what it takes because Bill and I are not long-time residents of Blackboard. So sometimes coming in, you're looking at things with new eyes. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm a, I'm a new president of an organization that I haven't been a member of that long because I'm looking at it with new eyes. Yes. I think so, where you're going to find this, yeah. I bet Ron doesn't know the number. <laughs> I would, I, I, I would, I would I'd be very be, I would be very surprised if Ron or the rest of the board, no offense bar, <laughs> would know the what answer to your question. Yeah. And you so, new supervisor will also tell you, correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, he doesn't have to answer you. <laughs> That's true. Is that your question about seniors? It's a question. What what's what's, what's our current the senior population and what an what, what, what do you what what do you anticipate you they grow to be? Two percent, five percent per year? Yeah, and if you've consistently only been using a fifth in terms of general assistance, a fifth of what you budgeted, isn't it time to budget that a little differently? Right. Well, it's not yeah, going to be that good. much. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting question because obviously you've misgaged the key in the, you know, in the past, so. Where are these seniors? But your questions that you want to ask of that should be answered, not by so much, like he says, I'm not making an excuse for me being a trustee, but we go to these meetings once a month. All these full time people who should be doing the research right. on this should have those answers for you. Right. And they should be at the meeting too. Absolutely. I've actually I mentioned that before in the past when we were when I first became a trustee. Well we're gonna to have to pay them, you know. She's making forty three or seventy thousand dollars a year. You would have to pay her extra to come to the meeting. An hour meeting and, and travel time. Oh there's, my God. there's <laughs> travel time. There's um, well, it's a big township. Payroll expectations set by yeah. government, mm -hmm. and it's based on Illinois and yeah. I know I work for the state of Illinois, so. Get him out of here. We forgive yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed the road. I call the roads. I, I fixed the roads in the state. Okay, then we love you. Okay. <laughs> so the township meeting, I've never been to one, so that you know, might put some okay. on it. It is next Tuesday, 6 30. 6 30. I'm fair. Where is it? Township building on the road. 1463. Fair. Okay. Okay. Which is, it's easy to miss that driveway too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Across from the grade school. Or yes. Grade school. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask, Bob? You know, isn't it? Didn't I notice that Ron doesn't even put in a full work week? Mm -hmm. The office isn't open a full work week. That has changed. When we first came on, the township was closed <coughs> at noon on Wednesdays. And we're looking at the salaries that our supervisor and our clerk and everybody make, and we're thinking, just so you guys know, our supervisor is close to seventy-nine thousand a year. That's that is that about is the seven. highest in the state. Yeah, one. Yeah. That is one of the highest in the state. Of Illinois. Well, in addition to that, he gets tra travel fee and he gets education fee and he gets a pension and, and he gets health insurance. So, to honestly, is the supervisor position um, should it even be full time? When I look at surrounding townships, absolutely not. But they got it to the point where, well, I better try and put in my 40 hours a week because I'm making $79,000 a year, which is ridiculous. But to answer your question, it was closed at noon on Wednesdays. They are open 8 till 4.30 now, Monday through Friday. Oh, it's, because a, it's a polling place. It's Ron there. Those it's Ron there. I do not know. I um, am told that he is. But I'm also told that if he is not there, there are, other there are other obligations that the supervisor has out in the community. Visiting the seniors. It's time for his ukulele. 
If you're hitting a to the the easiest way to spot the driveway is look for all the political signs. There's a zillion yeah. out there. Yeah. Like I got to ask, I got to ask, I got to ask, I got to ask, I got to know what a triad is. I don't know what it is. It's, it's for the seniors groups. Uh, it's the police department puts it on. It's kind of universal throughout the country. Uh, they have different types of programs for the seniors. The last one I went to, they, it was for trusts. They had a, brought in a law firm and it went through and explained the trusts to the states. So quite a story. Uh, they have safety programs. They have another one for heroes, which is on drugs and uh, how kids you know, steal and uh, hide drugs. It wasn't active for a while because Barb Moore said, who was the senior uh, coordinator for the Park District, was active with Jaron Smogalski, police official who's very interested in seniors, and they got it together. Barb Moore said, got old, retired from the Park District, and triad collapsed. That's why you're hearing about it again, because Jaron, Officer Smogalski, has reinvigorated it. A triple partnership between the police department and the seniors and... AARP or who, who's the well, I think fire department has a piece of it too. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. This is anyhow, it's for right. seniors. This is yeah. informative. Uh, what I would like, if possible, if you could email me if you have any other additional information, if you're going to make it to the meeting, and if you'd like to speak at that meeting, and what you'd like to speak about. Because okay. you're going to have to be prepared when you come and you speak at these meetings. Right. You write something down because you can't just wing it. No. Yeah, not just wing it. <coughs> you got to be really, really good to get wing it. Mm -hmm. and, and, they <laughs> and they sometimes have trouble with the, with the sound in the middle of the night. So if live. the sound system goes bananas, if it up. goes bad, it's fine. I so do you have my email? I can get out of here. Here's, here's an email. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm totally He's ignorant of those something. things. No, you got my email. You, got me. you guys, are you uh, on email? or the new car. The one with the car. I got the old guy. That's the one with the tooth mark on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh well, that's why, that, that's why I wasn't at the meeting. Well, I appreciate thing. that, guys. I, was, I wasn't going to shake it. We okay. had, yeah. That's my email. So, again, yeah, if you want to speed, let me know. Uh, if you're going to be there, let me know. If you can bring me with in China. you, let me know. <coughs> because then we can reserve that much time. Uh, are they three, three minute increments? Are they three minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes. Yes, right. but what? You, time away. you can give your time away. Right. And so you can each person time. has got three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes? You can have my time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, thank but you very much. But you have to fill up, don't you? But you have to give me your time. I do have to fill out the forms yes. and I give it to the attorney and the attorney makes sure that those people that say they're going to do it. Okay, what's our, our average oh. taxes from your property taxes? Thank you. What is this? The property taxes done is like... Meeting Google. Google. All of meetings. If you Google it. I don't know. It, it's, you know, there's another thing that people are, are asking me about. And you have to look at your tax bill because everybody's different. Yeah, and then if you, then if you go and fight it, you you could very well uh -huh. get it lower. Uh -huh. You know. Do you own a house here? Yeah. Good luck. With you that. compare actually, but if we actually it's tried to sell a house years ago and we just got the comparables because what it was we were asking for the price, the surrounding houses were not selling for that price, so we did get our taxes lower. It does work sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of effort. You got to do it. Takes a lot of effort.